can't underestimate Joe Biden's ability to fuck things up. I ain't the first person to say that. The first person to say that was President Barack Obama. He said that. His own buddy. That's who said that. And it's always been true. And now it's getting played out on the world stage. And this has implications. All around the world, this has implications. What he's doing right now. Instead of addressing the, the, the issue, being a man about it, and admitting that he made a gross mistake, and asking for the apology of America, and the apology of all the Afghani people and all the Americans stuck in Afghanistan right now, instead of doing that, which would be the only way to save face with this, he'd still come out looking like an idiot, but at least he'd be apologetic about it. Instead of doing that, that man doubles down, blames everybody else, and then commends himself. And then refuses to take any questions from the press. He did it the first speech, he did it yesterday again when he gave his press conference. And in yesterday's press conference, he didn't even address Afghanistan. He talked about COVID, he talked about um, mass mandates, other things, he, he didn't even touch on the subject of Afghanistan. And then walked away, just like he did the day before that when he gave the first speech. Why, does he forget that he said he's gonna be a transparent, that he's gonna hold himself to a different standard than Donald Trump? Yeah, that came out of his mouth. I'm gonna be accountable to the American people. I'm gonna take the weekend off because it's been such a tough week. I'm gonna to go to Delaware. I'm gonna take the, take a long weekend. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Boris Johnson has been calling him for 48 hours. Huh? Trying to trying to trying to figure out what the fuck are you doing? He hasn't returned Boris Johnson's phone call. That's our that's our number one ally, and he's not even talking to him. They're like, what is what message is he sending to to the UK? I'll tell you the message. He said, it, like, hey, man, I'll sell you down the fucking the river just like I just did to the Afghanistani people. I'll sell you down, too. And you're, you're our biggest ally, number one ally. When we said we needed to go into Iraq, when we said we needed to go in Afghanistan, when we said we need to go there, I need to go here, freaking UK is right there with us. Yep, okay. Okay, America, we're with you. Every single time. Now he won't even return the guy's phone call. Again, look look at the other countries, what they're doing, what China's doing, what Russia's doing. They're going to test, they're going to poke this, you can't even call him a sleeping bear. They're gonna poke this sleeping dog and fucking see if he fucking does anything. But they already know the answer to that question. He ain't gonna do shit. He ain't gonna do a damn thing. It makes me think he's provoking either Russia or China to go and do something brash so that he can respond, right? And distract the American public with, with a war. That's what I'm thinking. Because you have to remember, these are Democrats. The biggest warmongers out of any party. That's the, it's the Democrats. War, 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 war. Used to be the Republicans, but now it's the Democrats. See? And it's really telling because even, even these Republican senators and Congress people, they're not saying anything, okay? Some of them are, but the overwhelming majority are keeping their lips shut. Uh, scratching your head, why? You know, the media is scratching their head. The world is scratching their head, but if you were paying attention, it wouldn't be such a mystery, okay? Do you know 
that a week before this happened, the ambassador from Afghanistan to the United States went to America and talked to a whole bunch of people, talked to the head of the, the Department of Defense, talked to the fucking, that general, talked to a whole bunch of Congress people, Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy, whole bunch of people on the left, had meetings on the 10th, on the 12th, on the 13th, telling, telling hey, hey, are you guys, it looks like you guys are planning to leave. Are you guys going to really leave us blowing in the wind? And got assurances from all these senators. Got us, no, we're not doing anything of the such. We are committed to you. Do you know that? This happened. No. Did those senators and those congressmen respond to this ambassador? Not knowing what the president was going to do? That's a, that's a distinct possibility. You know, that's a distinct possibility. But again, nobody's talking about this. Nobody's reporting on this. I only know one person that reported on this. One person talking about the fact that the, the ambassador from Afghanistan was in America a week before. I'm repeating this so you understand. A week before this happening. And, and was assured by the Americans that this wouldn't happen. Promptly went back and look what happened. So either all these all these politicians lied to this to the, it's a woman lied to this woman or they didn't know either what the president was doing. The president totally made this decision out of left field. It's one or the other. Both are bad. Now if one's worse than the other, but they're both bad. Now I want to think that it was the latter and that it was the president making his decision all on his own, disregarding, disregarding his, his advisors, disregarding the rest of the world, disregarding the ambassador from Afghanistan. And I'm sure the president of Afghanistan told him the same fucking thing. He just disregarded all of that and just did what he wanted to do. Or it was all part of the plan. Either way, this administration looks so inept and so coward, cowardly and just looks like a bunch of fucking idiots. Either way. You got the head of the head of the military saying, oh, well, we didn't know that. We uh, have no idea how they got hold of all this equipment. Yeah, we, understand, we know exactly. You guys just left it there. You guys just left it there. I mean, did anybody even think of like, okay, we're pulling out, this is bullshit, but we're pulling out, we can't leave this shit for the Taliban, so why don't we put it all in one big warehouse in the middle of nowhere and take one of the fucking millions of bombs we've dropped in that fucking country and blow it all up so that at least the Taliban doesn't get it. Nobody thought of that? Nobody even like, even, even approached that subject? No, just pull it out, leave it all there. They not only got guns, right? And Humvees and helicopters and fighter, I don't know about fighter jets, but helicopters. They also got drones, fucking drones. Man, those are only like four million a pop, you know? Yeah, that's $4 million, fuck it. We'll just leave it here. I have no idea. You guys left it there. Man, what is, will someone in this administration stand up and fucking say, yeah, we did that. Yeah, we abandoned it. Yeah, we left all that stuff there. Not one of them. Hey, hey, this general, this, this head of, this guy needs to be fired. We had no bullshit. The intelligence agency says you guys knew exactly what was going to happen, you know, but you guys did it anyway. Again, the military has to do whatever the president says. The president says go here, president says go there, president says pull out, whatever. They have to do it. He's the commander in chief, you know. I would think a general 
right? If he's a general and he's gotten to that position that he would understand that no, we can't just pull out. And oh, by the way, by the way, we were keeping the Taliban at bay, keeping the Afghanistani people safe with 3,500 troops in country. That's it. Removing those 3,500 troops without even fighting, just removing, right? Turns over the country to the Taliban in two days. That's all it took. Yet, all it took was 3,500 troops to be there to keep them at bay. What does that tell you, man? What does that tell you? I mean, someone's head needs to roll for this. Someone. I, I have a good idea. All their heads need to roll. But at least someone's head needs to roll. Because just imagine if the shoe's on the other foot. Imagine if this was Donald Trump who did this. Okay? No, I can't imagine it because Donald Trump would never do something like this. And he wouldn't be scared to face the press if he did do something like this. But just imagine, okay? They impeached that man over two bullshit things. What do you think all the Democrats would be saying right now? It'd be all over Congress, all over the news. You'd have a whole bunch of Congress people making public statements. Now, nah, we need to impeach this man. And they, they would they would have the, the paperwork already worked up. He'd be he'd be it'd be voted on right now. Why aren't they doing this with Joe Biden? Well, because the Democrats have power, right? And the Republicans, they understand how useless it would be, okay? How useless it would be to try and impeach the man. That's why nobody's drummed it up yet. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe we still have, we still have weeks left to go on this. Maybe someone will do it, but man, just imagine if that was Donald Trump, they would have drawn up the papers the same day this happened. They would have drawn up the papers. But no, it's Joe Biden. No, not nothing. Oh, he just he made a bad decision. We just have to live with it. Again, you need to read between the lines and look at what's really going on and what the real story is. It's hard to sift through all the bullshit, but yeah, there's, there's only two, two distinct possibilities. <clears throat> Our intelligence community is that inept, his advisors are that inept, that they didn't give him the right information, he just, he did that, which I don't believe. He ignored them, okay, he ignored them, even though they told him that this was going to happen, he did what he thought was best. Or, it's all part of the plan, and this whole like, oh, we will, we have no idea, and this, this whole act of being inept, it is, is what it is, an act because it's all part of the plan to remove him. But we don't know. We don't know. It could be one of those three things. But meanwhile, people are dying. People are dying. Like falling off of airplanes. Like they, were, they were torturing people in the streets. They shot people in the streets. It's fucking ridiculous. It's fucking mayhem out there. Mayhem. Total fucking mayhem. I mean, where is the protest for this now? Where are all you humanitarians that protest every fucking humanitarian thing that comes on the pike? This is a fucking... Uh, the, the, the humanitarian crisis is on a whole nother level. Nothing like this ever happened under Donald Trump. It happened in the first seven months of Joe Biden's presidency. Look at all the shit that he's done. <coughs> and every single one of them bad. The spending that leads to inflation. The cutting of the legs of the energy industry. Okay? Um, the border crisis. This fiasco. COVID. Right, everything that man has touched is is blowing up and this is only seven months can we survive another 41 months of this hell no hell no but again is it is it all because of incompetence or is it part of the plan these are serious questions we need to ask
why, why, why hasn't there been one congressperson that's drum up impeachment? Just do it. So that at least you can show the public that there's people out there, there's politicians out there that are done with this, that are just like, no, this man cannot be president. Look at the decisions he's made and how it's affected the country. He won't even fucking talk to the press now. You're talking one of the one of the worst crises in the last 40 fucking years, okay? It's not up there with 9-11, but it's damn close. And this man won't even speak to the press. It, this man is patting himself on the back like he just fucking hit a home run. And then, then he... And a hand-picked reporter, the one he'll give the fucking interview to. And like, Stephanopoulos, you, you you think like you're special or something? No, he just chose you because he knows you ain't gonna ask the right questions. He knows you're an idiot just like him. Or his handlers know that. And he, go, he goes in front of the country and lies through his teeth. Not once, but twice. And then he goes on fucking an ABC interview and lies more. Everything coming out of that man's mouth is a, is a lie. A lie. His approval rating dropped like what? 15 points or something like that. And, and the rumbling is that the whole fucking cabinet, the whole fucking administration is is fucking at each other's throats. Like him and Kamala Harris won't even talk to each other. It's fucking ridiculous, man. It's fucking ridiculous. Again, if it's if it's just because he's that incompetent, man, what does that say about you guys that voted for him? Because we all said this. The rest of us that didn't vote for him, we all said this. The guy's a fucking idiot. The guy's a racist. The guy doesn't give a fuck about America. Don't vote for this guy. He's going to ruin the country. Look, it only took him seven months. Not even that. We warned you guys all about this. And nope, you guys voted for him anyway. Why, why, why did we have to go down this road? Why? Instead of having an honest, honest conversation, hey, you know, we don't like Trump because he's got an ego problem, you know, and he says mean things on Twitter. But, you know, let's like really talk about the things that matter. Let's talk about his actual policy. And if we had that actual conversation, Instead of freaking out about, oh, he's he's an egotistical fucking narcissist. Instead of talking about that, you know, I mean, by the way, Barack Obama was a narcissist. You know, he was a narcissist, just nothing would stick to him because he's a black man, you know, but still a narcissist. Instead of having that honest conversation, let's look at the policy. Okay, like, what, what did he pass that was so controversial? He lowered taxes. Okay, every American should be happy about that. He attacked the problem at the border. Every American should be happy about that. Because look, Joe Biden and the, and the Democrats ripped on him about his border, border thing, but is their policy better than Trump's? Hell no, hell no. Look at the problem at the southern border. Okay, talk about that. Let's talk about his foreign policy. Yeah, you know what? You may not like it, but the President of the United States should be looking out for the interests of America, not the interests of other countries, not the interests of NATO, because what has NATO done for us? We've done so much for NATO, what have they done for us? Except tell us we need to do more. Right. Look at his foreign policy with regards to these other countries, you know? Fucking tells Korea. Don't fuck around or I'm going to fucking bomb you into the Stone Age. Again, the, the, the Abraham Accords, 
the shit that he accomplished there with Israel. He did more for black universities than his predecessor, who's black. Yeah, we could we could point all these things out for you, for you, for you uneducated liberals out there that just just think he's an evil man. We could point all these things out for you. <coughs> there we can have a debate. But if you come in at it and your only argument is like, oh, he makes mean tweets. And he, he has an ego problem. That, that if that's your argument, it's not really an argument. The media twisted so many things that he said, so many things he did, out of context, totally out of context. And you guys just ran with it. You guys were so worried about your rights. You know, that you hold so valued. Your right to an abortion, right? Your right to gay marriage. He never threatened any of those things. You can say the Supreme Court, right? But really, the Supreme Court is decided by the fucking Senate. It's not really decided by the president. The president will pick a judge, but he's getting advised by his party on who to pick, you know? Who decides to get to be fucking on the Supreme Court is the Senate. That's who decides. So really, if you have a problem with the Supreme Court, you should go look at the Senate. And on top of that, it's all luck of the draw. Who retires? Who dies? Who's in power to make the decisions to, to which judge to choose? It's all a luck of the draw. Hey, right. you guys aren't willing to have this conversation. Oh, they're gonna, it's a concern, it's gonna take away my right to an abortion. Why are you so worried about your abortion rights, you know? What, the real argument should be like, why are you relying on something that's morally wrong? It's morally wrong to end the life. Life begins at conception, my friend. That's science. You, you guys always want to hop around and say, life begins at conception. That's taking a life, man. That's taking a life. You know, I, my, my take on abortion is, I don't want to end this, like, because obviously some women, if you're raped, if there's incest, you don't want to have that child, you know? And also there's emergency reasons for abortion, okay? But this is the vast minority of abortions. The overwhelming majority of abortions are stupid people not taking responsibility. That's all it is. Oh fuck, I had sex and I had unprotected sex on top of that. Oh shit, I'm pregnant. I don't want to have this baby. I'm not prepared to have this baby. Oh, pull it out. These are people making decisions that aren't adult decisions. That's 99% of abortions. And that's fact. So instead of harping on about, oh, this is a woman's right, blah, 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 blah. Why don't we fucking harp on? Why are we educating people? Hey, you know what? There's ways you can avoid getting pregnant that don't involve abortion. There's all kind of contraception, okay? Also, I know a contraception that is 100% effective that you will never get pregnant. You know what that is? Abstinence. If you can't handle the responsibility of sex, and believe me, it's a responsibility. It's an adult thing. There's so many things tied with it, you know? Rape, unwanted pregnancies, STDs. There's so many things tied with it. That's adult decisions. That's the education we should be giving our kids about abortion. You know what? It's a right, but you shouldn't look at it as a, as a, uh, as something to be worshiped, you know? Oh, this is what makes us great because we can get an abortion. No, it should be treated as such. No, this is an abhorrent thing to take a human life because you're just irresponsible. You, know? you cannot count abortions that happen because of incest, rape, or emergency abortions where they have to abort the baby to save them. Those don't count. I'm talking about abortions where like, oops, I'm pregnant, and oops, I don't want to have this kid, so I'm just going to rip it out. That's the abortions I'm talking about. No, we don't educate our youth about that. 
It's all about, this is a woman's right. Fucking bullshit, bro. Your argument is so fucking hollow about that. Okay? Gay marriage, okay? Man, pretty much in this day and age, everybody's accepted that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, you love who you love, okay? It should have been done a long time ago, making gay marriage legal, okay? Donald Trump never once attacked that whatsoever. Not once. Yeah, there's some crazy conservative Christians out there in the country, right? Who think it shouldn't be a right, but that's again a small minority. Most conservatives, we don't care. We do not care about it. Okay? Have no qualms about it whatsoever. You want to go ahead, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The trans issue, okay. Again, most conservatives do not care. You want to dress up like a woman, you want to tell everybody you're a woman, that's fine. You want to chop off your dick, right? You want to get fake breasts. We do not care. What we care is when you try to tell us that now you're a woman because you did all those things. When you try to tell us that that's science, that's not science, man. That's not science. You're not a woman. No matter what you do, you do all those things, you're not a woman. See, and if the trans community would just accept that and say, you know what? You're right. We're not women, but we prefer to be this way and it makes us feel better. We understand it's a fantasy, but it does that's what we want to do. Then we conservatives be like, finally, you get the argument. Finally. And if we tell our kids, we tell our kids that it's um, not possible for a man to be a woman, we're not, we're not to be fucking demonized. Because it's true. Science is on our side. No, a man can't be a woman. Even after doing all those body altering things, you're still not a woman. Okay? There's, there's a thing called chromosomes. You can't change your chromosomes. That's our argument about that. Again, if you guys were willing to have this conversation, and then this circles back to the, ooh, Jen Psaki, I'm circling back. This circles back to the, to the whole argument about right versus left. If you guys would just sit down and actually have this conversation, and just, instead of saying, oh, we're evil because we don't believe what you believe in, maybe we could find some common ground and understand each other, you know? No, no. It's like, it's either my way or the highway, right? And that's why we'll never get anywhere. We'll never get anywhere. There's Joe Biden, my way or the highway. Even though my way, even though my way is completely wrong and completely asinine and is gonna get tens of thousands of people killed, right? And is gonna piss off the international community and piss off my own country. No, I'm gonna do it because it's my way. I'm the president, the buck stops with me. Promptly turns, promptly turns around and walks away without even taking a question. That's your president. That's my president, huh? I didn't vote for the guy, but still my president, you know? And my right as a citizen to disagree with him. My right as a citizen to fucking say he's full of shit. My right as a citizen to say he should be removed. This man has done something that actually deserves him to be removed. He's proven that he's incompetent. He's proven that he can't lead this country. And it wasn't just this, like, this latest debacle. He's proven from day one, in fact, even before that, that he was not qualified to be president. Not qualified. If you're not convinced, then you're not paying attention. Or you're just, you're just ignoring it because you don't want to accept reality. And that's sad. That's really sad. Except reality that you made a bad decision. You voted for somebody that's a fucking idiot and is destroying our country. No. Can't admit that, right? Because then that would admit you guys were wrong. You guys were wrong. Whatever. More and more people are waking up. More and more people are seeing this bullshit. People that were moderates. And you know what? They're coming over to the right side because they're seeing how insane, insane you guys have become. Fucking insane. There's no other way to, 
to explain it. No other way to explain it. Insanity. You guys don't understand. You guys are putting yourself in a box. You guys like to talk about, we don't want to be in a box, but you guys are putting yourself in a box. To the point where most conservatives, we're not going to even deal with you anymore. Fuck you, bro. Guy thinks I'm evil, right? So why should I deal with him? You know? I don't think he's evil, but he thinks I'm evil, so fuck him. That's how most conservatives are going to be, man. Fuck you. You guys are creating that. Not us. You guys are creating that. And again, it doesn't take a fucking rocket scientist to know that half the country are truly fucking idiots.